welcome back to my channel so today I'm going to be sharing with you guys my labor and delivery story um, now my husband and I did have the intention of vlogging my delivery but I'm gonna be so honest you guys like everything happened so quickly and I'll kind of talk about that in the video that we just didn't get a chance now he did record um, little clips here and there but those are just things that I think we're gonna keep to ourselves for now um, but again labor just went so fast like we just really didn't have time to put this like elaborate video together and shout out to the youtubers who can do that because i don't know how i really don't like from my experience and like going into labor like there was just not enough time to sit there and try to record um of course my husband like i said did get a few clips but yeah kudos to the youtubers that are able to do it um it has been a few weeks since i last posted my husband and I did have like these really cool ideas to um, or videos we wanted to record but unfortunately like the last weeks of pregnancy were just really hard not just on my body but like mentally like I was just drained and ready to have my baby so I do apologize that there's been such a huge gap between videos but I'm really excited to share with you guys today you know everything that went on prior to delivery and when I had my baby girl and stuff and I think I'll share with you guys a picture of her at the end and tell you guys her name um so I am going to start let me pull out a calendar though oh and let me say I'm probably not going to edit this video too much because I want it to be raw and I want my daughter to one day look back and see this video so just kind of bear with me it's going to be long but it's a fun story I would say I hope you guys enjoy it um okay so let me backtrack so my daughter was born 26 May at 11.24 a.m. So let me kind of backtrack a few days before that. So I started getting my first contractions that Thursday before. So that would have been Thursday the 21st of May. And I remember getting contractions, but they were nothing like, I would like, I don't know. They weren't like consistent enough, I would say, for me to go to the hospital. And when they started that Thursday night, I remember thinking, well, I have an appointment Friday, which would have been the 22nd. So I was like, let's just wait for my appointment tomorrow. I see the doctor in a few hours. Let's see what she says. And I remember you guys thinking in my head, I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm probably like at three centimeters by now. Like I've probably made good progress. Like I'm starting to feel stuff. And I went to my doctor's appointment and I had no movement. Like no progress whatsoever. I was still one centimeter, 60% effaced. And I remember when I was originally told I was one centimeter a few weeks back, I was like thrilled. I'm like, oh my gosh, she's gonna come early. Like everything's going great. Um, and if you're pregnant, don't get discouraged if you see no movements, trust me, like it doesn't matter. If you haven't dilated at all, like things can just, you know, pick up like super quick so I was so distraught you guys and I'm like damn I'm starting to feel stuff and there was no movement and my sweet doctor I just love her so so much she um tried to make me feel better and she was like hey it's your first baby like it's gonna take a while and not just that but again like being dilated or not really doesn't have anything to do with like labor right now and what I mean by that is whether you're one centimeter or three centimeters like things can just progress so quickly or you could be three centimeters and get stuck there. So like I said, don't worry about that. So she's trying to make me feel better. Um, so again, that was my appointment on Friday, which was the 22nd. And then Monday the 25th rolled around and I remember just con like that continuous pain. And I remember I didn't tell my mom and I chose not to tell her, even though she would ask me every single day because I just didn't want to get her hopes up because I was doing it to myself thinking, oh, I've got contractions today, like is today the day? And I know how excited she was, how excited my dad was, how excited, you know, my husband's family was that I just didn't wanna make a big scene out of something if it wasn't gonna happen. So I kept saying, no, no pain, nothing. But I did tell one sister um, and I remember her telling me, well, it's gonna happen this week. She was like, she's gonna be here soon. So I remember that night, I was just so done, you guys, like, I think for every pregnant woman you just reach a point in your pregnancy where you just want to meet your baby but also physically like you're just done like you guys I couldn't get up out of bed on my own like I had to pee what seemed like every five minutes 
um, the swelling in my face. You guys might see that my swelling went down tremendously. Hopefully you do. Um, but I've noticed that change. Like my hands, you guys. I couldn't even like close it because of the swelling, my feet. It was just a lot. So I remember the that night, Monday the 25th, my father-in-law FaceTimed us to check in on us. And, you know, he would always ask me, like, how I'm doing and stuff. And I remember telling him, like, I am so done. And he said, oh, that baby is coming tonight. And I remember telling him, I hope God hears your prayers because I'm like, I need her to come. And um, that night, I also remember just, I was actually putting my dog in her crate because she sleeps in her crate at night. And my husband was upstairs playing video games. And he turned and looked at me and he said, babe, you are like done. And I said, yes, I am done. Like, I'm so over it at this point. And I remember going to bed and I was so upset at my husband, you guys. Like, just keeping it 100% real. Like... I was so upset with him because he was playing video games and there was something about that night where I just didn't feel good and I just wanted his comfort and I get it like it was the weekend like the baby still wasn't here like he was playing his games like he wasn't doing anything wrong um so I remember going to bed all pissed off and I really wasn't even asleep I just kind of was there like uh is something gonna happen or not um, so many thoughts were running through my mind and at this point I wasn't even having contractions um, during that period and I remember my husband came to bed and it was late it was like probably around a little bit after 2 30 in the morning and my husband always did this from the moment we found out we were pregnant he always puts his hand on my belly and he would pray and he would pray for our daughter and I remember him praying and I was so like angry I was like pissed off that he was just coming to bed and as soon as he stopped praying you guys i kid you not like maybe not even a minute after he took his hand off my belly i felt the strongest contraction that i had felt up to that point and when i felt it i remember feeling like i peed myself also there might be a lot of tmi in this video and i remember telling him i'm like julius i think i peed myself and my husband i just remember him jumping out of bed so quickly and of course I'm struggling to get up because of my big belly and as soon as my feet touched the ground you guys it was like a puddle of water like not a puddle like literally a waterfall of just water coming down and my husband at this point had turned the lights on and stuff and I just remember him running back and forth trying to get me towels and I just stood there waiting for the water to kind of stop leaking and it never did that's something I don't think anybody ever told me but your water never stops leaking um, so at this point, um, I make it to the toilet where I just pull my pants and underwear off essentially and I kind of sit there still I'm like dripping water everywhere and I remember seeing my mucus plug and sorry again for the TMI but it's a labor and delivery video and my mucus plug was there and I remember my husband just his face was just so hilarious. Um, so he did call labor and delivery and told him that you know my wife her water broke whatever they did instruct me to put on a pad and to head over to the hospital and let me tell you guys something as soon as your water breaks those contractions become so consistent and it is a pain it's like undescribable you guys but the best way i can say it's a period cramp um they're a little bit different than braxton hicks i feel like braxton hicks were more tightening in the stomach and you will hear people say that about contractions but for me it was just a very very strong period cramp like times a thousand um so at this point my poor husband i remember he's gonna kill me for this but he was obviously in his box or briefs or whatever and he managed to put socks on i remember him putting socks on and then i remember him just running up and down the hall like gathering our stuff and what i did is i actually got in the shower I don't know if we're supposed to shower or not I actually never asked either um, but I felt like I had to like almost clean myself a little bit because of how much water I had lost and I did get in the shower I didn't use soap or anything like that because I didn't know at that point you know any bacteria could get to the baby so I kind of just rinsed off and of course even after the shower I'm still leaking so by the time I saw my husband next to you guys it was hilarious he had managed to put clothes on he wasn't just wearing socks and underwear at this point and he helped me get dressed and we he had already loaded the car um and we were gonna head to the hospital the crazy thing is you guys we had always planned to take my car 
Now, I have an SUV and he has a truck. And the reason why we wanted to take the SUV was because I knew that once we left the hospital, it would be a little bit harder for me to like try to climb up on the car or his truck because it sits up higher, especially with everything going down down there. So we loaded up my car and I kid you guys not, you guys, at this point, my contractions were so painful and they were happening because we were timing them every three minutes and they were lasting for 30 seconds on average. So I'm in pain and we get in my car and you guys, my car would not start. And I have never, my car's a 2016 and I have never had issues with it. And the day I needed it to come through for the team, it would not start. And my husband runs inside, grabs a second pair of keys, nothing. Like the car was just not starting. So my husband basically grabbed our bags and loaded the truck up at this point. Um, we weren't even able to take the car seat with us at that time just because of the urgency of trying to get to the hospital. And of course he's seeing me in pain. And you guys, it's funny because when he was loading hit the truck, like I felt such a sense of calm. Like I just kept praying and praying and praying through every contraction. And I don't know, I kind of almost laughed at the situation. I'm like, God works in mysterious ways. There is a reason why he doesn't want me to take our car and that's fine. So, you know, I managed to get in the truck and we head to the hospital. And during our drive there, like, I was just miserable, you guys. I was in so much pain. That's why I'm saying, like, if your water breaks, like, just know that your contractions are just going to start immediately. Like, it's crazy. So we make it to the hospital. And then we, because of COVID, um, they, I guess, made a single point of entry in the hospital after a certain time, which we weren't briefed on. So we parked in the back side where we were instructed to during the hospital tour, um, but that door was locked. So we actually had to get back in the truck, drive around, and luckily the hospital here is so tiny, you guys, it was maybe a minute drive if that, um, to the ER side, and then that's when we were able to go through. We had forgotten to take masks. Like, we didn't take any type of, like, covering or anything, but luckily when we were there, the ER was absolutely empty, and there was only the two nurses that checked people in. So as soon as they saw me, they were like labor and delivery. And my husband was like, yeah. So they let us go up to the third floor. And then when I get there, of course, I'm still in pain. And I show the nurses, you know, my contractions and stuff. And they're getting me set up. They have me change into a gown. And then they start like checking me and stuff. When the nurse checked me, you guys, I was already at three centimeters dilated. And... I mean, that's kind of what I expected just because my water had broken on its own. And, you know, they started, um, like, registering me and asking me questions and just kind of putting me in the system or whatever. And I remember telling the nurse, and this was, and I apologize that I don't have, like, the accurate time measurements. It's just, again, I'm in pain, so I don't really know. Um, but I remember telling the nurse after they kind of enrolled me and stuff. Enrolling me is probably not the right word, but whenever they ad admit me to the hospital or whatever, I remember telling the nurse, like, I just feel so much pressure down there. And she was like, okay, let me check you again. You might have, you know, progressed or whatever. You guys, when she checked me, I was at a six. And I was like, there's no freaking way. You got to understand that by the time she first checked me when I first got there and they did my paperwork, you guys, I don't even think an hour went by. Like, I don't know, again, I'm in pain, so who knows, but honestly, like, I don't even think an hour went by, and I was at six centimeters, and my labor went so freaking fast, and I was in such excruciating pain, um, I remember they got, like, some information from us, and that's another thing, because my clinic had already enrolled me for my, um, induction on the 4th of June, like, I think I was already in the system, she was basically just confirming information, um, so they got my IV started. I know I had to get, I think, one or two bags of fluid before I could get the epidural. Um, but when the anesthesio anesthesiologist, I think that's how you say it. Um, but anyway, when they came to give me my epidural, um, I was at a six. The epidural didn't take long, you guys, and I did choose to get it. The pain was just unbearable. And you got to imagine, I was already at a six. Um... When they gave me the epidural, I remember her saying, okay, I'm going to let you guys relax now and rest. 
and she said if you feel pressure down there or if you feel the urge like you have to poop give me a call and I was like okay she was gone you guys maybe 10 minutes once me and my husband were finally left alone and I felt the urge to poop just keeping it 100 percent so I messaged or I called a nurse and I'm like hey like you told me if I felt pressure or whatever to let you know she came back in you guys and I was already at a seven so I do have doubts I'm wondering if maybe I had reached a seven before I got the epidural or if I reached it right after I got it um, but long story short by the time we were finally left alone from getting admitted I was already at seven centimeters so she uh, put a peanut ball on me um, the baby didn't really like me leaning towards my right so she kind of switched me later on to the left um, and I kind of just waited um, of course during this time she did call my doctor especially with how fast I was progressing um, once I reached seven, they kind of left me there for a little bit. At that point, I think I finally called my mom. And I was like, mom, I guess when I'm in the hospital. And at this point, we knew it was real. Um, and my poor mom, she called me so often. And um, my husband, of course, let his family know, like, hey, your water broke, we're in the hospital. Seems like it's the real deal. And it was, of course. Um, and then I remember getting a contraction. Um, no. Well, I was getting them. But I wasn't feeling them. When I did get the epidural, just for the, those of you that are wondering, um, I felt maybe two after that, but after that, like, I was pain-free. Um, and also, like, I don't want to get into the whole topic of should you get an epidural or not. That's totally on you. Um, but I always felt in tune with my body, you guys. I never felt like I was high or, like, uh, like drugged up. Like, um, I always just felt so in tune with my body. Um, so long story short, after we finally call our parents, let them know and stuff, um, I remember feeling that pressure again. So the nurse came back to check me, and at this point, you guys, this is where I literally almost rolled off the bed. She told me, you're at nine centimeters. And I was like, there is no freaking way. Like, there is no way that I'm at nine centimeters. And I forgot to tell you guys the time, but I did look at the time, and my water had broken at 2.49. And my daughter was born at 11.24 a.m. So there was about eight hours of labor. Um, so after I reached nine, they called my doctor again just to let her know like, hey, things are really progressing really fast. Um, by the time my doctor made it to the clinic, I want to say it was like 9.30 maybe. Um, she came and by the time she checked me, you guys, I had already reached like 10 centimeters. And it's crazy my body was ready now the only thing is the doctor decided not to have me push just yet because the baby was still a little bit high so instead of having me push she was like hey let's just keep working with the peanut ball have her drop some more and then what that's gonna do it's gonna limit the amount of time you're gonna have to be pushing she said you know if we start now then we're gonna be pushing forever so because labor had progressed so fast for me at that point i was like you know what i'm fine with it i'll chill here let's do the peanut ball let's let her drop some more um i think maybe 30 minutes to an hour if that the nurses came back it was my nurse and then it was like a doctor she's already a doctor but she's learning like labor and delivery i guess or whatever they came and we did some practice pushes and once they felt that i was ready they went ahead ahead and called a doctor i think the doctor came back like towards almost 11 i want to say it was at least after 10 45 and we started pushing and i don't know i felt like i had such an amazing team at the labor and delivery um for the hospital i was at like they were just so phenomenal and i don't know if they do this for everyone they probably do but they were hyping me up like every single push they just kept telling me just how amazing i was doing and it would just felt awesome and i felt like oh my god i'm doing a good job um and we kept pushing and pushing and sure enough the baby came out um she was born on may 24th at 11 24 a.m so about eight hours like i said of labor she did weigh six pounds six ounces um she was 19 and three fourths inches long and she was just beautiful <laughs> like I, it's crazy you guys because i remember always closing my eyes during like you know the pushing just because like you just trying to get all that energy to push your baby out and they made me do three pushes of course they counted 
once you start pushing 10, 9, 8, and down. And by that third push, I was always just so exhausted because you get out of breath, you know? And I remember having my eyes closed for that last contraction. And when I opened my eyes, you guys, like, she was there. Like, I totally missed, like, seeing the doctor pull her out. I don't know. It was, like, by a blink of an eye, like, literally. I had my eyes closed. I pushed. I opened them. And she was, like, right here. And it's crazy because I couldn't really see her face that well at first. And the reason for that is they put her on my chest, but everybody was, like, trying to clean her up and stuff. Um, so once I kind of got control of things, I remember seeing my husband cutting the umbilical cord. Um, but then they finally moved her up a little bit closer to me, and then that's when I finally saw her. And my reaction was so unexpected. For those of you that know me in person, you know that I am just so cheesy. Like, I cry for everything. Like, literally, any like sad scene in a movie in a show like anything and everything I cry and I really didn't cry like I had maybe a tear or two drop but I was just in such awe of my baby it was just not the reaction I expected from like my personality but it was just so perfect and I remember just observing my husband and it was like such a breathtaking moment just to watch him he didn't cry of course but he was just like in awe like just we were just so speechless that she was finally here um yeah and once she was there um it's crazy because I didn't find this out till later but I did have a one degree tear which isn't bad compared to like more severe ones but I would have never noticed you guys because when they were like cleaning me up and all of that like I was just so like overwhelmed with joy of seeing my baby like I didn't even know what the hell was going on around me and it's funny because I was like reviewing some documents that the hospital gave us and some stuff I don't even remember signing like and it could have been like during contractions before the epidural and all that stuff but like literally like no clue but I was just such awe of my baby girl and it was such an awesome experience like not only was my labor short, which I am so thankful for, like we had, we started off on a great note. Um, but again, like the, the nurses, the doctors were all phenomenal. My husband was great. My friend Lee, you know, she helped us out a lot by taking Saline, bringing us our car seat since we weren't able to bring it with us. Everything was just so phenomenal. Um, and I'm so glad she's here. Um, I would love to answer like a and a maybe in the future for those of you. Oh hold on my camera's saying i lose my breath whenever i see you you stole my heart what is it that you do my life was great till you added colors like the moon needs the sun we don't care about the others Set my world on fire You're my heart's desire I just wanna love you, just wanna hold you Just wanna be with you till we grow old Please tell me you'll stay or take me away I want you for myself every single day You set my World on fire You set my world on fire I don't know what I'd do without you You make me smile, what is it that you do? I just need
need you I don't know what it is you do I just want you I just need you I don't know what it is you do I just wanna love you Just wanna hold you Just wanna be with you till we grow 